There we go, the fish on. Louisiana redfish at its best. Rooster on the wild coast. Florida Keys bonefish on the Hobie. This week on Hobie Outdoor Adventures, we explore one of the most popular inshore fishing destinations in the U.S., the state of Florida. We'll take you to Southwest Florida for some exciting tarpon fishing. But first, let's take a look at some of the past inshore action and where we've been so far in Florida. We start out with our first stop at Jensen Beach. Morgan met up with Jerry McBride, launched their Hobie kayaks, and searched the shallow waters for trout, redfish, and snook. Depending on time of year, you might also find uh, four different kinds of grouper, four different kinds of snapper. We have actually four kinds of snook here. Um, we have triple tail, look downs, tarpon. There's something like 600 species of fish that theoretically we could come up with out here. If they jump, they would just be an ultimate game fish. They are so strong. Um, and that, that fish right there, well, you know, that can, that can reach 70, 80 pounds, not here, but it would, if it were to run, run north, Fish on. Nice. Not a bad little guy. Start the day. I think I proved Jerry wrong. I actually caught a fish. That's what Jerry was saying. All these potholes up here are holding some pretty big fish. Come on, baby. Oh, that's a good one. Is that going to break your personal best? Woohoo! Got her. This is what we came here for. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful trout. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Fishing these flats, it's really, really important to be as quiet as possible, as stealthy as possible. Any little bang on your kayak, you know, a paddle or a stake up hole could spook a fish. So, and that's where the, the Hobies come in really well, especially the Pro Angler series, because we can ease up onto the flats and start sliding over with the tide. We can stand up on them maybe spot a couple of fish, or we'll real gently drop an anchor or a stake up hole. And we sometimes even get out of our kayaks and, and wade up to, to where we want to fish just to be as quiet as possible. There he is. There's a good better fish. Yeah, Jerry. Maybe a red. There you go. Pretty pink fish. About the same size as the one this morning. You have a nice day. Maybe one of the more decent ones we've caught this morning. All right. A decent one, they're getting bigger. Not exactly what we're looking for, but I will absolutely take it. My first snook of the day. There is nothing better for pulling fish out of structure, and there's no worse structure fighter than a snook. As you can see, he's getting a little better. Hopefully there's, a, hopefully there's a big guy here someplace. What's cool about snook, they will tend to clamp onto your finger until they're ready to go like this, and you just put your thumb in their mouth, and they'll just hang on till, till they're, uh, they feel like it's time to go. And there she goes. They're getting bigger, Jerry. Switched up to a glow shrimp, and this puppy came up and ate it. Here she comes, right to the surface. Uh. There you go. My first uh, dock snook. I wasn't gonna let that one get away. I had the drag button down. See the DOA shrimp? The glow color is the key in this dark water. Now let's see if I can do the uh, lip trick. That was awesome. Hobie Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Lorenz, celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence. Find, navigate, dominate with Lorenz. Rhino Rack, the world's most useful roof racks. Power Pole, Micro Anchor, Swift, Silent, Secure, and Small. And by Aftco, American Fishing Tackle Company. 
Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Today's show is all about fishing Florida. Our next destination is the Florida Keys. The uniqueness of the Keys is, is you know, there's one way in, there's one way out. And uh, you've got all these quaint communities scattered along this one road, fishing on either side of the road. That's the great thing about down here is there's fishing everywhere. You feel it, just every shop, you, every road you drive down. Just have a great time, embrace being down in the Keys, and embrace South Florida, you know, just see what all it has to offer. Whoa! Oh my gosh, it's a big boy, finally. Whoa, he's got big teeth. <laughs> Haven't done this before. Let's be nice to each other. Look at the size of that thing's head. That is a beast. <laughs> Look at that thing. Beauty. Oh, beauty. man. All right. Thank you, sir, for the fight. He's got to be over 40 inches. There he goes. Get over there. Holy moly. Flying out of the water. <laughs> now he's going to Cuba. <laughs> So I have the luxury of watching Morgan practice this the first time. All right. Wow, 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 wow. My biggest barracuda ever. First time fishing for these cudas, and it is a blast. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> this feels like a good one too. Oh, there he is up on the surface. Should take off on another run here. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you catch a big fish from a kayak? And you can see, this is a good sized fish, um, but you know, you set your drag and you know, he's not gonna pull you overboard. That's not how it is. You got your drag set, it's gonna pull line out before it does anything like that, so. Oh yeah drag puller here. Oh, yeah, it's a grouper. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I caught a glimpse of it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that bad boy right there. I know these things get a lot bigger, but they are definitely, definitely fun to catch right here on the reef. Good job. I don't know what this is. Whoa! It's a bonefish. Is it? Yeah! <laughs> it's a bonefish! Oh my gosh! Dude! <laughs> Your day is made. Oh man. They're so strong and they don't get tired. Under the boat. It's a big bonefish. This is what I came here for. Whoa, look at that. Florida Keys bonefish on the Hobie. <laughs> awesome, Hawks K. All right, I'm gonna send him on his way. Thank you. Woohoo! yes, that was awesome. Well, up next we go inshore for some backwater fun with Jerry McBride in Panama City. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Well, our next stop in Florida, we headed north to Panama City, home of the famous white sand beach and warm Gulf waters. Jerry McBride took us inshore for some backwater fun. There we go, fish on. Little trout early in the morning. Come on, guy. No, not under the Mirage Drive. You always got to be careful there. I've got my one foot up so that drive's tucked under, under the kayak. 
There's Mr. Trout. Beautiful fish. We are going to let him go. What a way to start the day. I moved here for a reason. I had been coming out here for uh, years and filming and uh, writing articles, so this was my first choice, which kind of tells you what I think of this area, frankly. Even though it's, it's growing pretty fast, the water's usually fairly pristine. Uh, you can go out here. For the most part, the, the seagrass is in good shape, the water's in good shape. Here fairly shortly, the flounder will move back up here. That's a big fisher here, and it's a little early today up this far. Spanish mackerel are probably on their way up, and so the fishery changes, you know, every every few months. So you, you should never get bored here. If you come out here with, you know, and do things typically, run over the fish, uh, make a lot of noise, you aren't going to catch big trout consistently. Oh, this feels like a better trout. Oh yeah, I actually made a cast over there and got a hit. So I dropped my power pole down, put it right back in there, and she came up and hammered it. All right. All right, big girl, take it easy. It's a better one. Maybe close to 20 inches. Sweet. It's a better trout. So I'm running 20 pound braid on a little Daiwa reel on my St. Croix rod. I love these rods, these inshore series. I have about four feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon to a uh, loop knot right here to a soft plastic with a pretty much weedless um, weighted hook. I'll work my way down there. Fish on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I'd be doing all right today, I think. That was really, really fun. Oh, I love catching redfish. Yeah. All right, we're gonna let her swim for a minute. One of the best things I like about the Mirage Drive is when you need to revive a fish. I mean, you get a big tarpon or a big snook, you just stick your thumb in his jaw and start pedaling forward. And you can't do that if you have to paddle. Um, so pedals save lives. It just now realized it was caught. Definitely a pretty fish. There we go. Not real fat, but the biggest red fish of the day. They really, really are pretty fish. He's just a little guy, but the tails are so blue here. Let's send him on his way. Morgan is heading back south to Fort Myers, where our Hobie fishing team member, Ross Gallagher, takes him out for fishing for tarpon, the incredible prehistoric fish. Working with Hobie kayaks, we have a lot of great anglers all over the country and the world. And Ross Gallagher is one guy that stood out to me. He's been one of the pioneers for catching big tarpon from the kayak. So when I found out that I had the opportunity to come to his hometown and go fishing with him, you better believe I was excited I'm really, really looking forward to this trip. So we're rigging up here. Um, we have a light setup with 30 pound fluor on it. We're fishing all braided line for casting. And Ross works for Hoagie Lures and we're gonna be casting some of his baits. It's a seven inch eel tail. It's a UV infused bait, a lot of glitter. And then we've got a, this is a three quarter ounce six O barbarian jig head. So this is the VisiCarbon Pro. It's a product carried by Hobie. It's a nice little light that you can twist on. Gives you that white light and visible. It's also got a red flag, so it sticks up about three or four feet above. Gives you that visibility during the day, and then you have the light for at nighttime. My most memorable tarpon catch was actually the first tarpon catch I had. We had one of the Hobie team members, Marty Mood, come down. And uh, we went out there, and to our surprise for late winter, um, there was eight to ten adult tarpon stacked up in the light, and I think we, we hooked up on the second or third cast and had, uh, you know, 130, 140 pound class tarpon, and that was the very first time we took the Hobies out tarpon fishing. 
Another team member, Christina Weber, she came down and did several trips with me and uh, one of her big fish was probably about 120, 130 pounds, took us for a really long sleigh ride out into the Gulf and we probably covered five miles during the fight. One other one that was great was with another team member, uh, Elizabeth Saylor came down and uh, she wound up hooking and landing a, a real large tarpon that we followed around, gave it a good mile and a half fight and got some great photos and video of that fish and ended up being a cover shot for Kayak Angler Magazine. So we were all pretty, pretty stoked that that fish got some great coverage and, and we got to enjoy it together. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back after these messages. Hobie Outdoor Adventures has been brought to you by Daiwa, advancing the sport of fishing. Hobie Polarized, trusted, quality, heritage. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. And by Yak Attack, rigging the dream. Ross, are you trying to target like near the pylons or anything or just anywhere? Yeah, they're gonna be um, up here under the shadows and then on the edge of the pilings. You know, I like to watch Ross. I'm still learning a lot about um, how to fish these bridges and, and the current from the tides and the shadow lines and stuff like that. And he's, he's got it down to a science. So I watch, you know, the areas that he's casting and slowly kind of figured it out. Fish on. What do you think it is, Ross? <laughs> Snooky? Big black drum ate that skirted jig. Wow. Those are kind of uncommon to catch at the bridge. Normally they're eating uh, crabs or crustaceans. It did eat the jig. Uh, it was a nice surprise hit and, and fight right there. Halfway thought it was a snook, but it was fighting a little bit slower. So a great way to kind of break the ice and get the first fish out of the way. Pretty clean looking black drum, actually. They get a lot of lesions and kind of nasty looking sores on them, but this guy's clean. Good oh, there we go. Right Harpoon! Oh! Whoa! Gave us a good show. Quick release on that one. Later on, we kept on working the shadow line. Um, the tide kind of, you know, stopped running as much. And then the current started picking up again. And I made a cast into this area where I'd just seen a, a tarpon kind of blow up on something. There's somewhere. You called it, man. Got a hit. The wow. fish jumped a couple of times and shook All the right. hook again. So that was my second fish that threw the hook. So I quickly reeled back in and made another cast into the same area. And his buddy was sitting there with him. And I got a good hook set on that fish. He's going crazy. After jumping too, this guy's hanging on for a little longer. Man, the Mirage Rive's killer. I got full control of my boat still, you know? Yeah. Keeping her in the water is a... Uh... Yeah, there's few things as rewarding for a guide as seeing somebody just full of joy from catching their first fish. It's, it's really special that they're able to take home that memory and uh, that experience, share it with their friends and, and have something to talk about that they were able to experience with me. And that's, that's very special. Great work, man. Yeah, baby. Got slimed up. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit wet. Tarpon bath. Yep. It's a nice fish that's sitting right in the little back eddy. We're normally there when the water starts kind of swirling and makes it easier to ambush prey. You can just hold that. I got the bale open. Okay, so leave it open? Yeah, just leave it open in case she uh, goes crazy. Goes crazy. So hooked. You see they've got a really hard mouth down in there. That's why, you know, the hook set can be kind of troublesome sometimes, but once you do get a good hold, you know, if you hook right up here in the button, there's some soft tissue. It's a great, great area to get purchase on the hook. Nice, dude. Sweet. Two to the boat. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Well, what are our odds right now? Two out of nine or something? I think two out of eight, so we're... Is that about average for tarpon it's, fishing? Uh, with artificial, I mean, it's 
It's <laughs> pretty on par. Nice. As far as it goes. I always look forward to coming to Florida, you know, if it's redfish, snook, trout, or tarpon, um, there's always something to catch in the water. There's so much great bird life, there's manatees, there's um, so much life in the water. So coming to Florida, you never know what to expect. And uh, I was really, really happy with the way that the night turned out and I couldn't have asked for a better time catching some Florida tarpon. It was a blast. It's late now. <laughs> yeah, no. We should just go get some breakfast. I think it's close to 4 a.m. But yeah. it was completely worth it. I'll do that anytime. Excellent, man. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you could come down here and get a taste of summer fishing in Southwest Florida. Well, appreciate it, dude. Awesome. Glad Great. To here. Thanks a lot. Hey, and don't forget the 2017 Hobie Bass Open on Kentucky Lake in June. It's one of a series of U.S. and Canadian qualifying events for the 2017 Hobie Fishing Worlds. Log on to HobieFishing.com for more information. Thank you for watching, and see you next week for a new episode of Hobie Outdoor Adventures.